Hey everyone, I'm Mani Seni and today I'm really excited to bring you something special. If you have ever written an automation test, you have probably used something Jason Huggins built, Selenium, Appium, or maybe even seen his robotic testing experiment with Tepster. His work has shaped the last two decades of the test automation and now he's back exploring how AI and decentralization could redefine the next era of testing. So today I'm thrilled to welcome Jason Huggins, the creator of Selenium and Appium to the browser tech community. Hey, Jason, welcome. Great to have you here. Thanks. Yeah, great to be here. Yeah. So, Jason, Selenium completely changed how teams approached web testing and Appium did the same for the mobile. Looking back, what's been the most rewarding part of seeing these tools become part of almost every QA engineer's daily life? Uh, it, it might be, it might sound cliche, but I'll say it anyway. It's, it's not the technology, it's the community. It's been really heartwarming to hear all the stories of people who've built, you know, livelihoods around it. Um, you know, they've had jobs, they've built companies around it that, you know, there's been a community of people who, um, you know, who, who use it and, you know, it, it's, it's been great. Like the, you know, Selenium, it's, it's not just a community. There's actually an ecosystem. There's a, a Selenium economy. It, it, it's been, um. It's been fun, right? So the, the metaphor I like to use is that it, it's a relay race, uh, you know, like swimming or the, or the Olympics or something like that. And yes, I ran the first lap or two, um, but over, it's the project's now been around 21 years. The birthday was, its 21st birthday yeah. was yesterday. And so that's a lot of extra laps on the track uh, that I didn't run, right? So it's now more of a community effort than it is just mine. So it, it's just been fun. Um, and I just, you know, excited to kind of keep keep the party going. Yep, absolutely. And like uh, community had a great run for the things to run the Selenium for that much of lo long 20 years. So now coming to like, you have worked on real devices, robotics with Tapster. So how mm -hmm. does that experience connect with that? What AI is doing in currently like in the automation today? Yeah. Uh, so, so for the last 10 years, if people didn't know, I've been building robots, like actual physical robots that have motors and move around. It's still in testing though. So it was testing touch screens and things like that. Right. Um, and I think that the big, um, I think observation is that there's a lot of things that we can learn from robotics that we can apply to mm -hmm. testing that I don't think we have yet. Uh, it's, I think the metaphor, there's like two metaphors. One, I think the way things are shifting in the future Imagine I'm famous or infamous for using these metaphors, but let's say your do job yesterday was moving a box in a warehouse from one shelf to the next. Now, a robot will be moving that robot, uh, moving that box from one shelf to the next, but you'll be on a balcony looking down at all the robots. So instead of just doing one task, you'll be managing a fleet of robots. That's how the job will be moving. Um, the other thing I think is that uh, in the context of robots that are like self-driving cars. I, I use that analogy a lot for what I'm working mm -hmm. on with Vibium. That I think we were, um, the, the how do you make a robot walk through, um, uh, you know, an area or, you know, or drive a street is you have to have, um, you have to be very defensive. You know, there's a phrase in driving, you're defensive driving. You have to build mm -hmm. that into the robotic. So every step of the way, you're constantly on the scan for hazards, things that can break everything. I think when we started the Selenium project, we were, um, we didn't, I guess, didn't appreciate how many hazards were out there in the world that could break your tests. And so I think there's a little bit of like bringing in uh, from robotics, this idea that anytime you try to do anything, someone can get in your way, something could go wrong, the, the motors could burn out, you constantly having to add telemetry to everything to constantly scan for danger, basically, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, th that that's my metaphor that I think a lot of the uh, kind of safety precautions that the robotics field has been building in, especially the autonomous driving, autonomous robots, hoping to bring that into testing. Yeah, that's fantastic. And like, so uh, the next question from the community we have is like, you have always focused on solving the biggest pain point in the automation and that is maintenance. We have seen teams suffering from this thing and uh, it always hamper their uh, daily automations. So do you think right. AI can finally break in the cycle and uh, remove those flaky, brittle tests that fails with every UI change? Yes. So I feel a little guilty because, you know, again, the project's been around for 21 years and we haven't solved it yet. Right. So uh, although I, I have a suspicion, though, is that 
It's not so much that the tests are flaky. It's that the world is flaky and the tests are giving us accurate information that the world uh, doesn't always work the way we want it to. Um, and I, I think the analogy there would be, even this is actually, we've, it was even true with the Selenium project. We were often testing just an app uh, running local host on one computer. You did not have 30 different JavaScript includes coming from like 20 different vendors. It was self-contained, right? So you can reason about something and you can expect it to work more often when it's just one program running on one computer. But the second you run things computer to computer over a network, that signal might be bouncing off a satellite, going off a tower. Any one of these pieces could be breaking at any moment. And I think what we're seeing is that those things are breaking uh, all the time and our tests um, haven't caught up, right? I, I use the metaphor, just the, you know, the safety gear. But the other thing mm -hmm. is like, I think we should be building into our systems, not that we're trying to solve flakiness. I don't think actually, I think the world is flaky, uh, mm -hmm. but we need to adapt the tests to be able to not completely blow up and freak out and um, be a pain in the butt. Sorry. Um, just because something was flaky, right? So it's almost like you should assume uh, the worst as opposed to the best uh, mm -hmm. when, you, when you're making these testing tools. And some tools have kind of uh, adopted more of those principles uh, built, baked it into the testing tool. And I'm looking to do that um, with the stuff that I'm doing in the future. Yeah, so absolutely. And uh, it, it's make me like think of a another analogy of like how we live life. Uh, so we can't control everything. We got affected where we live, uh, we, um, uh, who, who do we live with? And they, they can make us flaky also. <laughs> uh, so right. that sounds like interesting. And uh, it actually ties in really well with what we have been exploring here at Browser Stack 2. We have been developing a few AI agents that can already do some pretty cool things like generating test cases from the PRDs, analyzing the failures and suggesting the fixes. So it's been amazing to see how AI is starting to take on parts of testing processes and that used to take hours of manual work. So, and this brings me again to you, Jason. So you have been working on something new that's getting a lot of attention in the testing world. So can you give us a quick sneak peek at what you are building and how it connects with the next wave of the AI-powered automation? Yes. So um, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, mm -hmm. I gave a small sneak peek of this uh, at an event uh, I think last month in uh, Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you a version of this, but I've added a couple of extra features since then. So this is literally the first time anybody is seeing this version of it. Um, al although with the warning here is that, um, you know, one, uh, it's it's a demo, it's a mock-up, it's not actually running all the things in the cloud. This is a, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, proof of concept to kind of show you um, how I want it to work when it when it gets fully deployed so it's not ready to you can't sign up and use it tomorrow but this is i'm getting closer and closer to what i think what vibium the first release will look like and ironically mm -hmm. it's it's actually kind of a throwback to the very very first versions of selenium if anyone's familiar with that anyway mm -hmm. with that said i'm going to share my screen um let's see if i can yep so let's bring it on the exclusive demo <laughs> all right so do you see a bunch of boxes uh, yeah. on my, okay, excellent. Okay, so very quick demo. This is, uh, I'm calling this Vibium Cortex. And the thing to understand is that there are going to be three products. It's going to get complicated really quickly because testing is complicated. Similarly to how Selenium was a suite of tools, there was Selenium IDE, which ran in the browser. There was, uh, the Selenium, like in the, now the web driver, the thing that actually automates the engine. And there's also Selenium grid. Um, mm -hmm. There's all these different tools and you can kind of pick and choose. And sometimes it can be a little confusing. Anyway, what you're looking at here is Cortex. Um, mm -hmm. And this effectively, I, I, the metaphor that I want to go for is something that's like Google Maps. So it is a zoomable interface and you can, you can play around with how you want it oriented. If you're looking at this on a phone, you might want to look at it this way. Um, mm -hmm. And this the idea would be that you have all of your tests viewable in this screen. There's going to be several different ways that tests get into this. And that's almost a talk for another day. There's going to be 
Um, and that's also potentially uses uh, one of the other tools. W when I first started working on this, I was originally thinking I was going to be implementing uh, simply. Um, it's going to be like 5em.py or 5em.js. It's going to be something that looks like what you would, when you, you downloaded mm -hmm. Playwright or downloaded Selenium and just used those libraries. That's going to be there. When I click the play button, behind the scenes, it'll be running a Vibium test, or it could actually be Puppeteer or Playwright or whatever, right behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, but this effectively is kind of maybe the, metaphorically the equivalent of like the grid setup, right? Uh, also, uh, the inputs, you could either write the tests. It, it could also potentially rec record them, something similarly to like a, a record record playback tool, but uh, like Selenium IDE, or you could be uh, instrumenting user behavior. Like you could have, you could have a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, but I'm not going to show that just, actually, no, I will. I'm going to show you the quick demo. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is a very simple uh, kind of e-commerce site. There is a record playback tool. Um, okay. It's not, uh, anyway, so if I, this is, uh, I'm, I'm calling this in the demo, it's called Mapper. I think we might be renaming it to Vivium Sensor. Uh, and this mm -hmm. is like one of the several inputs into the system. So if I go ahead and re, re, uh, reload the page, it loads that we um, navigated to it. It's a very simple demo. Everyone's seen this. Everyone does this. Kind of have to do it. Someone's write a passage for a, a, um, a, a, test, a new testing tool. Um, so it records those actions and boom, uh, there you go. So... Uh, and just runs as a Chromium extension. If I go through and look at what uh, was recorded, it's not just the L, uh, what was what was done or the locators, but it's also taking a screenshot. It's also showing the bounding box bounding box of what was recorded. Um, so we're going to be doing a little bit more recording. All of that also, though, the difference with the previous record playback tools is they would often just stay here in your browser mm -hmm. and you play them back, and and that's it. Um, mm -hmm. The idea here is that this would then get sent to Cortex. Um, I'm going to close this. And then these flows would then be, would show up. And not just the one that you did, but um, all of your workflows that you've recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, this also could be your previous test runs or whatever. Anyway, the I guess the trick here is that if you click play, it can then, you can see kind of zoomed out um, all of your tests playing like at once. Uh, and then also if I kind of just selected one, I could click, mm -hmm. click run again. And you would again, see, you know, see this uh, playing. This would be representative of, you would see the video, the video of it running potentially on your favorite, you know, cloud testing tool. Maybe this is a mm -hmm. video coming from a, a browser stack or, or some other service. Mm -hmm. And it shows the animated test. Granted, all of the services have this, right? Um, so this isn't necessarily anything new, um, but I'm building this into this, right? Um, there's one extra thing that I've wanted though, is that if I hide all the workflow steps and I just mm -hmm. basically show that first step, potentially this could be something where it's almost like um, the other metaphor I had was uh, if you walk into a sports bar and you see like the 20 TV screens showing all the games, potentially right. you could just see all of your tests running live. Mm -hmm. And if you, and if anything seemed out of place, you could, you could click on that and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, look at some kind of detail. So for the, I guess the managers and the CEOs of the world where you can kind of zoom out and imagine it's not just three, but it's like, you've got a hundred mm -hmm. or 50 or whatever. You can kind of zoom out and just see the bank of TVs or you can also just show it as all of the, the, the workflows, right? Um, so that's the, and the idea here, the reason why I'm building this tool bec is because if metaphorically we're trying to build a self-driving car, uh, Google has something mm -hmm. called Waymo, right? Mm -hmm. I think the core technology for, to make a self-driving car work is that you also need to get a navigational system, right? So mm -hmm. IBM Cortex is basically the, the Google Maps of the whole thing that, when a test is running, it can refer back to the map to find mm -hmm. out um, how to get unstuck, right? So a lot of this, I think the current tools, everything is kind of running locally, or maybe it'll engage in AI to just like analyze one screenshot. But I think you need to have all of this workflow data also combined with, uh, you know, potentially, okay, the, the extra data that, oh, hey, this ran nine times out of 10, you know, mm -hmm. here's this anomaly right here. 
right? So we're going to need all, a lot of extra recorded data to be able to fix the tests. And that's, we'll go into this thing called Cortex. Um, the other idea following in the footsteps of Selenium is that there will always be an open source reference implementation of this that you can run locally. There's a lot of people mm -hmm. who are nervous about trusting the cloud. So it'll br be either bring your own keys for wherever AI part you use. You can run that on your own system or potentially running it locally on your own local hosted um, favorite AI tool. But also if you had your own lab, you could run it on that. There's a lot of companies that are... Um, they're fans of the cloud, but they have to run for either for privacy or security reasons, have to run it locally, right? So mm -hmm. this, I think this, this tool, this visual thing, uh, the thing I'm, I mentioned uh, in social media earlier, like I really want to bring this play button back. Sorry, last thing yep. though about this is that um, I'm really excited about AI assisted coding loops, mm -hmm. specifically vibe coding, where you're mm -hmm. just really not doing a lot of work, but just sitting back and watching. I'm really hoping that instead of me manually having to click this play button, when you're using a tool like Lovable or Claude Code or some other tool, it will then go to this page or whatever behind the scenes, mm -hmm. be able to click play and run all the tests. The AI will decide what gets tested and how, and, and this Cortex tool will be able to report back directly to your AI assistant on what worked, what didn't. So you can kind of stay in that cloud code or lovable dev loop, and you wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily actually ever need to come to this web page. It might be kind of fun as kind of a dashboard. It might be have a monitor in the the corner where you can uh, you know watch all your stuff go. But it, mm -hmm. for this tool, I think I would really love it to be a dev tool where the AI is writing the tests, the AI is running the tests, and you can sit back and kind of you know this is like your balcony you know in the warehouse watching all the robots do their thing. Anyway. That that is uh, probably a little bit longer of a demo than you wanted to get, but uh, I'm not. I'm a. Uh, I have no short stories here. But anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop my screen there and and uh, uh, end the demo. So anyway, thank you. Yep. So that's super cool. No. Um, uh, so what we are seeing here is automation that does not just follow the instructions. It's more about like learning and adapting. So this really feels like where the next decade of testing is headed. Uh, already. So and. If if you are as curious as I am after seeing that, the good news is the conversation continues inside our community. We are hosting a community exclusive AMA with Jason on the Browser Stack Discord. So here is how you can join and ask your questions. So join the Browser Stack Discord and the link is already in the description. And then head to the Knowledge Hub channel, find the thread titled AMA Jason Huggins and post your questions right there. Jason will start answering your questions right after this uh, and uh, he will be in the thread. Uh, you can ask him anything about Selenium's journey, future of the AI in testing or even uh, what he's shown currently like uh, about the YPM. So Jason, thank you so much for joining and sharing what's next to the testing world and to everyone watching, don't miss the AMA. Uh, opportunities like these doesn't come often. So thanks, Jason. Uh yeah, thank you. And uh, really looking forward to hearing what the community has to uh, ask next. And, uh, you know, let's keep the conversation going. Yeah. All right. That's a wrap. Head to the Discord thread, post your questions, and let's make this AMA one of the best yet. See you there.